Good morning, everyone. Um, we know most everyone here, but then again, because of COVID, I know there's been lots of people who have come into the church since last time we've spoken. And so um, we wanted to have a quick time uh, for introduction at the beginning, just a little bit about Anakari and myself. Um, but we lead the college ministry, um, and we have been doing so. This is actually like right on the dot, our fifth year of being in the Franklin House. Um, and a lot's happened during that time. And so we're excited to share a little bit about who we are and what we've been up to and um, just the ways that the Lord has continued to bless the ministry um, even over this past year. Um, next slide. So basically, um, we are New Life College Fellowship. This is a uh, shot from our fall retreat, uh, which we're thankful to still be able to have this past year. Um, and I want to apologize for the readability of my slides. I forgot we had a square screen, so I made a wide screen, so it made it even more difficult this year. Um, but this verse, uh, Romans 15, 5 through 6, um, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit among yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus, so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and we're going to get into really what the vision of the ministry is here in a moment. Uh, next slide. But first, Anakar is going to give a little background about us um, and kind of how it's led into what we're doing and sort of how we conduct the, the ministry. So I'm going to try to speed through this as fast as possible because we know most of you. Um, but it's, I think it's important to share some of this so that you know kind of how we're personally called to this ministry because we really do feel like the Lord has personally plucked us out to do exactly what we're doing. Um, so how we met. So that's Josh and uh, yeah, you can probably tell who Josh and me are. But we're uh, both military brats and so our parents grew up or they were stationed in Okinawa together. I'm from Minnesota, so is Josh's whole family. Jay and Brenda are from Minnesota. And so apparently we knew each other as little kids and I never remembered him. He remembers this six-year-old blonde-headed girl showing him dead cats and closets and bats in my barns and stuff like that. So I was really mischievous farm girl that he found really memorable. But um, after I was uh, graduating from undergrad, I was looking at coming out here for grad school. And I told my mom and my mom was, you know, I was praying, Lord, if you want me to go out here for grad school, I, I would love to be connected to a family that I can be shepherded and taken into so that, because I can't afford to go back to Minnesota and stuff. So my mom, not knowing that she was going to be my answer to prayer, reached out to Brenda, who three days, seven years and three days ago, Brenda reached out to me and invited me to be essentially another daughter in their home if I were to come and move out here for grad school. And just a few hours later, Josh introduced himself and was like, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be able to meet you when you come out to visit the school. I'm gonna be in Peru. And so that launched a whole discussion about missions because I was leading a mission trip to Nicaragua that summer. He was leading a mission trip to Peru that summer. And three weeks later, he flew out to Minnesota, took me on a date. Seven months later, we were engaged. Six months later, we were married. And during our initial talking period, when we were getting to know each other, um, we were just kind of feeling each other out. I was thinking, what is my life like after 50 going to look like with this guy? And so, you know, because I think about these things long term. <laughs> I wanted to make sure he wasn't going to be some d dud, and so I was like, what's your, what's your plan for your life? Like, if you could do anything after you retire, what would you do? And I have in my mind what I would want to do, and he says, college ministry. And I was like, that sounds great. I can get on board with that. I would love that. And a year later, we're in the Franklin House. So clearly the Lord has called us to this. Um, so we got married in 2015, 2015, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 2015. Um, we had been leading this care group in our home that just happened to be all college students. 
We led a mission trip to Peru together. All our college students were the only ones who signed up. It was open to adults. We only got college students. And they became a little family. And when we came back to the States, they invited people and invited people, and we were exploding out of our house. At the same time, New Life was transitioning to try to find a new college ministry director for the Mary Wash. And so, long story short, Pastor Sean and Pastor Doug and us came together, and it had been their vision for, I think, 10 years, right? To have a couple living in a home downtown Mary Wash um, to reach the Mary Washington students. And we expanded the vision to all students, college students of Fredericksburg. Um, and so that was what we proposed, and it was a no-brainer. And a month later, we found the perfect home. So next slide. Oh, I'm skipping over something. It's all right. You can keep skipping. Come back. Next okay, slide. Next slide. There, there you go. go. So a month later, uh, we found this house, which is the house we're currently in, the house that the church has since bought. So the church owns this house. This is equity that the church has. So this is your house. <laughs> and um, so this is where we run the ministry out of. This is where we live, right behind. Next slide. Right, oh, there before, you there you go. Um, so right behind the house is this massive parking garage and like the field, um, the intramural field is right there. Um, I'm pointing behind you, okay. So the intramural field. Um, so it's literally, we didn't realize how perfect it was when we got it, um, but there's a room that's like a ballet room that it's just, it's huge and it's totally like not normal for a colonial style house. And the fields, they have these huge lights that light up the way so our students can feel safe when they're walking to and from campus. And it's a seven minute walk from the dorms for the UMW students who most of them don't have cars. Our Germana students can all drive. And there's a massive parking garage if we were to ever not have enough parking, which we've never run into. Um, so the Lord just totally put all this together. So February 2016, we moved in after already having done this for a year, and we absorbed the UMW ministry, and here we are. So now we have two kids, Judah and Abigail, two and one, and a third on the way. And so I'm gonna have a baby girl in August, yay. Um, so we've figured out how to do this while raising a family, and we're so grateful, and our call has not changed at all. And so that's us. Uh, if you could go back a couple slides, um, I think maybe three. That's good. Yeah. So um, just to talk a little bit about what the vision of the ministry was um, and still is, um, we really had this idea that we wanted to help build this disciple-making ministry for young people. Um, and that's in line with New Life's mission to build the kingdom through training leaders. Um, and so we serve um, under the oversight of the session. We're both staff of the church. Um, and um, basically our, our job and our goal is to seek out college students in the area and provide a place where they can come and foster Christian fellowship, um, where they can be discipled. And um, what we found is we really, um, we attract a lot of students who, um, either who grew up in the church but maybe are struggling with their faith or um, who've sort of dabbled in Christianity on and off but have never really taken it seriously or we get a lot of, we get students who are very strong in their faith but just have no fellowship and no place to really feel recharged before going back onto the campus during the week um, and so um, we kind of have become this um, melting pot where we get people from all different walks of life but um, and even from different churches in the area, but um, it just really works. We're, we teach from a very grounded, obviously reformed theological background, um, but our students just, they enjoy having a place to fellowship and to um, really feel like they have a, a home away from home. Um, and so our purpose is to try and help build this sense of community among the young people. Um, and we really, the goal in doing that is to help further the gospel um, and really raise the next generation of young leaders, uh, especially during a time when there's so much 
confusion and political unrest and cultural change, um, it's, um, it's a blessing to be able to have a home to do that out of as well, um, where students kind of feel very safe and secure in a place where they can um, really open up and be more vulnerable. Um, so that's been a huge blessing of having the home. Uh, next slide. So our goal is to, like I said, we want to reach students of lots of different backgrounds. Um, we want to be, um, we're a ministry that has been and continues to really grow through student initiatives. So it's been just a lot of word of mouth, which was helpful, especially this past year with COVID. Um, they didn't end up having an in-person um, college fair on UMW where you would normally get to go out and promote your club and have a lot of um, people coming by that didn't happen this year, but we still had quite a few new students um, just through the testimony of people already in the group, which was really neat to see. Um, but really the three main areas that we focus on down at the bottom is we have in-depth Bible studies and worship nights on Thursdays every week. Um, we do one-on-one -on -one discipleship with our students, and then we also have small group discipleship with our weekly men's and women's studies. Um, and then we do lots of events throughout the year. We try to have one major retreat every semester and just different events, opportunities for students to invite new people and to really fellowship and build that community that we're looking for. Uh, now you can go forward a couple slides. Um, so I'm gonna hand it back off to Anakari for a minute. She's gonna kind of tell you about this past year and what the model of our ministry really looks like. Um, and, and then we're gonna hear from a couple of our students actually. So this is more like <clears throat> the culture of our group and kind of how we function. So this is our mug wall. Um, so when you come into our home, there's this giant wall of mugs with coffee and tea and stuff. Anything you, your heart might desire, we, it hasn't been open all COVID season. <laughs> but most of those mugs aren't ours. The students come and they leave their mugs so they can claim a little bit of the house. Um, next slide. So hospitality has been really, really vital for um, sharing the gospel in this community. That's one of our heartbeat calls is to be hospitable in this home. But this past year, we've had to do a lot of virtual Zoom um, stuff. So we've tr that's one example of a Thursday night large group. Um, so we did this thing where uh, ev at the end of every Zoom call, we'd pick a winner and that person would get like a gift basket on their front porch and they'd have to open it in front of Zoom. Um, so we've tried to do things to try to make it feel like we're still together, we're still having hospitality, but we've been really, really encouraged by how faithful our students have been, how hungry they've still been um, for the word, for even awkward fellowship like Zoom. Josh and I don't really enjoy it very much, <laughs> but I think we've enjoyed it as much as you possibly can. Um, and so we're back in person now. So we were in person, next slide. We are in person for a huge chunk of the fall. So that's, I think that's our Christmas party. Yeah, that's our Christmas party. So everyone's holding their breath in that photo. <laughs> they just quick flash the camera. Um, so we do require masks. We've been doing all the social distancing that we possibly can. Obviously that night we weren't able to at all. Um, but we haven't had any outbreaks or anything, so I feel like the Lord has really blessed us and kept us safe. Um, but that's an example of what our care group was like in the fall when we were meeting in person. Next slide. That's our fall retreat uh, where Pastor Sean was our speaker. And it, we didn't require social distancing or masks or anything because we're all sleeping in the same areas. And we, again, the Lord totally protected us. <laughs> we're not, so we're just like totally overwhelmed by how much the Lord has blessed the ministry this year as careful of we, as we've tried to be. Um, next slide. So these are some more pictures from the fall retreat. Some happy faces, getting fresh air, loving fellowship. Next slide. Uh, some silly face masks and card playing. Next slide. Some more shenanigans. That's human foosball that we try to play every year that we go to this. That's Liam having his weird, I don't know what he's doing there. Next slide. 
Um, so this, this is an example of one of our extra events. So every year we do a men's paintball in the fall and then in the spring the girls are like, well now we want to do it. So it's girls and guys. Um, so these are warrior men. Um, it's always a highlight of the year. Next slide. This is our Christmas party. Um, I think of the most weird games I can think of and see who's willing to embarrass himself. Um, next slide. That's a, if you don't know what Galentine's Day is, you probably haven't watched Parts, Parks and Rec. So it's uh, basically Valentine's Day for your girl, girlfriends. So that's the yearly tradition we have. These are some of my girls. Next slide. So we're going to get into student testimonies, but we wanted to share all that to um, share that we really couldn't do this ministry without having a home environment. And it's been very, very important for our students to be able to have a home away from home, especially the students who have really experienced a lot of persecution on the campus, for them to be able to come into our home and get a reprieve and feel freedom. Um, we really kind of view ourselves as a hospital. So when our students come in, they get all bandaged up and girded up to go back into the world and fight the battle. And we just want to be an encouragement to them. So we're really focused on discipleship. Um, and that's why we spend so much time together and take these risks is because they need it. So we're going to get into some student testimonies now. I think the first one is a video. Oh, and just because I don't remember if she mentions it in the video, this is one of our seniors from UMW, Claire Stark, uh, who wanted to share a uh, recorded message with you all. Hi, my name is Claire Stark, and I'm an environmental geology major at the University of Mary Washington. I attend Fredericksburg United Methodist Church, and I've been a care group member for the past two years. My first few years of school were pretty rough. I had relationship issues and was just unimpressed with the school. I was very discouraged because I felt like I had made a mistake coming here. I ended up taking a year off and took general education courses at a community college and worked full time to pay for them. When the year was up, I realized if I was going to get a degree, I had to come back to UMW. So I did. My very first semester back in my very first class, a girl asked me to come to Club Carnival on campus and see their care group booth. I was not really looking to get into any clubs, I just really wanted to get in and get out with my education. But I decided I'm going to see her all semester, I might as well go. So I did, and this is where I met Anakari for the first time. She suggested that I come three times, and if I didn't like it, then I didn't like it, but at least I tried and made an effort. So I went to their first meet and greet cookout, and I had just had all four of my wisdom teeth removed, so I wasn't able to eat any solid food. But Anakari asked if I wanted some yogurt from their kitchen, and I felt at this moment which it might sound weird, but this was the place for me. I felt that these people would go to all costs to make me feel comfortable and make me feel welcomed, and they did. Anakari and Josh are the most loving and welcoming people I have ever met, and they are so knowledgeable of the Bible, it really fuels me to want to learn more. I grew up in the church and I grew up a, you know, typical church kid going to Sunday school every Sunday, not really paying attention, but this was the first time that I actually wanted to learn on my own and they encouraged that and they made me feel at home and they didn't make me feel less than anything else or anybody else because I didn't have prior Bible knowledge or I didn't know anything about the Bible, but they were just really wanting to help me learn and feel welcome. I want to thank you guys so much for supporting Josh and Anakari and their mission for college students because I feel at home with them. 
I now look forward to coming back to UMW because I get to go to Care Group. video cut off when she sent it, but um, we also, we have uh, another one of our students, next slide, um, who's also going to be sharing, um, I think we have Amy up first, so Amy has been with us for a couple years now, um, she's a nursing student at Lord Fairfax Community College in her final year, um, and so she'll be sharing a little bit as well about her experience. Hi, so like Josh said, I'm Amy. Um, I go to Lord Fairfax Community College and I'm in my final semester of their nursing program. Um, so I first started coming to the college care group um, right when I started college, so that was fall of 2018. Um, so from the very beginning, I loved care group. Um, I remember thinking like my first or second time coming that um, that I really liked the whole group and uh, I really wanted to be a part of it. Um, I was so amazed and I was so encouraged by both Josh and Anakari and just by the whole group, um, just from the openness and the kindness that I saw from all of them. Uh, they have really taught me, like they were talking about, about what true Christian community looks like. Um, I've never had a lot of real Christian um, friends growing up, and especially for my first year of college. Um, so um, this was the first time I had had such genuine Christian fellowship um, with people my own age. Um, and so I really learned a lot from them, and I've learned firsthand why um, community is so important. And I have made several great friends. Um, and over the years, and I can hardly believe that it's been almost three whole years that I've been going, um, Care Group has been constantly challenging me to grow in my faith and to um, get a deeper relationship with the Lord. Um, and I have always felt um, so loved and encouraged there. Um, and in the past year, especially with all of COVID and all the changes, I've been so grateful that Care Group has still been able to meet because um, both my own church and, um, and school have been so limited with the actual in-person meetings we've had. Um, so I've been so grateful that Care Group was still able to meet. Um, so I want to thank all of you so much for the love and support that you give to Care Group. It has been so important to me, and I don't know where I would be without it. Up next is our um, actually club president. So we're a ministry of the church, but then we're also, we have club status at UMW. Um, so Ruth is our UMW representative. You can come on up. Um, so she's the president of our club. She keeps us having club status. She allows us to keep going back to club carnival. She makes it so we're not kicked off campus, all these things. So yeah, she does a great job. Good morning. My name is Ruth Wilma. I am a senior at the University of Mary Washington and a member of Columbia Presbyterian Church, um, a PCA church in my hometown. I came to Care Group four years ago as a somewhat naive freshman <laughs> looking for a college fellowship group. My high school mentor told me that I should be looking at Bible studies while I was touring campus, but being super disorganized, that didn't exactly happen. Um, so a few weeks before I came to UMW, I emailed Anakari and I was like, hey, like I heard about your Bible study. And she invited me to our first meeting and I've been here ever since. When Anakari asked if uh, we would be willing to share today, I could only think that it would be incredibly difficult to share the last four years in only four minutes. And I think I'm a little over, so there's that. I had a couple of memories pop out at me immediately, though, and so I thought I would share them with you all today. God used Care Group to rebuild my faith. Like Claire, I had grown up in the church, but I had walked away about three years before coming to Care Group um, after I became disillusioned by the suffering I experienced in high school. I had imagined life as a Christian would be easy, and let's just say my faith didn't last very well when I found out it wasn't. 
Although God drew me back to himself in his grace and mercy during high school, I came to care group very spiritually hungry. Through Josh and Anakari's teaching, I learned who God really was, not who I thought he should be or who I thought he was, but what the Bible truly said about him. This then would become a much stronger, more solid foundation for my faith than I'd ever had before. I also arrived at UMW four years ago, fresh off the boat of Christian private school. To say I was shocked by my first week would be a little bit of an understatement. <laughs> After watching a very racy orientation presentation, I remember texting my dad saying, we're not at Christian private school anymore, Toto. <laughs> it was very encouraging to have care group as a place to be spiritually fed on campus which even though I love UMW, in all honesty, it can be a very spiritually dark place. For the first time, I found my faith being attacked and ridiculed, even by some of my own closest friends. Some even claimed the name of Christ while living lives and believing things that were completely antithetical to the gospel. Since I live on campus, I'm in the midst of this culture for 24 seven, and sometimes that can be quite difficult. To have a home where I can go to and be spiritually fed and renewed to go back onto campus has been so encouraging to me, and I'm not sure what I would have done without it. Care Group has especially blessed me this past year. The recent coronavirus pandemic has disrupted my life, as it has everyone else's. I felt disconnected from community due to coronavirus restrictions and because I had left campus the previous semester to study abroad. Most of my clubs and activities were canceled, and the majority of my friends wisely decided to stay home and save money. I spent most of my time by myself in a 17 by 10 foot room, and it could be a little bit lonely. Although this was my hardest semester, I was incredibly blessed by the fellowship that Care Group provided. My friends were texting me, meeting me on campus for meals, Anakari invited me over for coffee, and even though it was really difficult, I was so blessed by their encouragement. Thank you all so much for your investment in the college campus ministry. Your support for this ministry, which includes so many students that you'll never meet and you'll never know your impact on, has been an extreme blessing to me and is a testament for your love for Christ and your community. Unbelievers on UMW need a place where they can come to have their questions answered in a biblical way and many like me just need a place to come and be encouraged after a week of fighting in the trenches. I have been incredibly blessed by your investment in Care Group the past four years. So on my behalf and on behalf of our student body, thank you so much. So hopefully, um as we've done, as we've spoken to the church over the years, uh, we've kind of come to the realization that a lot of times it helps to just get perspective from the students themselves. So hopefully that was encouraging to you all because um, we can't really convey how they feel, but we're really grateful that they were willing to come and share. Um, and we do know that, um, like Ruth mentioned, there's many of our students who you'll probably never meet um, there's been hundreds of students through the home over the past few years, um, but it has been really a blessing to see uh, to see the change that takes place in the majority of them. Um, and I think one of the greatest blessings is when we do have um, the the blessing to have students for four years, like we've had with Ruth and a couple of other our others, Riley and some others, is um, just getting to see how much. They grow in their personality and in their faith. Um, and probably the biggest blessing is seeing when our students really kind of have the light bulb moment that the ministry is like their ministry, their home, that they can take a part in being welcoming to new people. Um, and just seeing the, um, the growth of this hospitality mentality um, has been really neat to see. Um, so we wanted to go through um, some quick praises and prayer requests, um, and we've historically almost never had time for questions, so we're trying to actually change that this time. Um, so I want to go through just a few. One of the big ones, though, has just been this year, we realized 
Um, the bigger impact that Care Group has had has been the blessing of seeing uh, marriages taking place. So we've had six couples get married who met through Care Group uh, since us being in the home, which has been really, really cool. But uh, in the past, I want to say year, we've had um, five children come out of those couples and or are on the way, which has also been really cool to see. Um, and we've got a couple more um, couples that just got engaged recently. Um, so that's one huge praise that we never really thought about when we first started this. Um, but also one of the biggest praises has just been being able to have um, really faithful members throughout the COVID season. Um, unfortunately, when everything kind of shut down last March, uh, we went from a weekly average of 37 students in the home to immediately having to stop and switch to Zoom and having about, I don't know, I want to say 18 to 20 people being engaged in that because for a lot of students, they just don't like virtual um, or they get so much of it during the week that they're just not really that excited to do another two hour long conference call. Um, but despite that, over the summer and into the fall, we um, saw an uptake in the number of students coming back. And like I said, we had, I think we've had at least six new students start coming since the fall, which has been a blessing too. Um, and um, Another huge praise has been just the fact that we could have retreats. Um, and one, one thing I wanted to mention too is that we were very cautious in leading up to the retreat. We asked students to um, really limit social time out and you know be very conscientious of making sure they're healthy coming on to those events. So we don't want to alarm anyone, um, but um, those have been going great. We have our spring retreat coming up in April as well um, that we're looking forward to. Um, and then, honestly, the support of the church has been a massive, massive blessing. We couldn't do this without you all. Um, and we get so much encouragement from the leadership and from different members within the church. Um, so that's been a huge blessing for us. Uh, we also wanted to give a shout out to our awesome grandparents. So uh, my parents and Nancy and Akari's mom, they've basically become honorary staff members. Um, a lot of the times on Thursdays, they'll come over early and help us sort of get the kids ready for bed. and. Um, bring dinner, and that's um, been a huge um, blessing to us. Um, and then our baby girl coming in August, that's another praise that we're excited about. Uh, next slide. So some of the prayer requests, um, especially first and foremost, is just encouragement for the students. Um, we've had, being in college ministry, you always experience um, students who have challenges and light, uh, family situations that are always hard, but I think COVID really brought out a lot of that with the isolation that took place for a lot of our young people. Um, there was, there's been a lot more, I mean, as a lot of you probably know, when you have a lot more time in isolation or in close proximity to uh, even family, you can have conflicts come up, um, but we've had students who've been dealing with um, depression or um, difficulty with the switch in the style of learning. Um, the, the churches shutting down was a huge burden for a lot of our young people early on. Um, and so that lack of friendship and spiritual community um, was especially um, apparent over the summer last year. Um, but if you could just continue praying um, just for encouragement, even for our students who aren't going to be able to have like in-person graduations this year and just expectations not being met and all the disappointments that have come along with that. Um, but yeah, prayer for our student body would be much appreciated. Um, also, just for continued growth of friendships, we had a lot of students come in, but we don't have a lot of students who have a common background. Um, our students weren't getting to share those common experiences on campus and things that they normally would. And so um, just prayer that we would have um, opportunities for them to really build deep friendships because um, that's really a key to our ministry. Um, increased wisdom for how to counsel students through a lot of these new and difficult situations that have been coming up. Um, and um, increased financial support for our ministry. Um, we're working on continuing fundraising for that. Um, we'd appreciate prayer for Anakari and for her pregnancy um, coming up towards the beginning of August. Um, and then finally, just the smooth transition into the fall semester. Um, there is a, some good news. We had a couple students tell us that UMW had sent out emails indicating that they expected things to 
for the most part, be getting back to normal as far as regular campus life goes, and we're hoping that really creates, um, we're hoping to see kind of a massive uptake and in interest in jumping back into a ministry. So I think one thing we forgot to mention is all the clubs were virtual this year. If you had more than two members, you had to be only meeting on Zoom. We were able to get a religious exemption for that. Um, and so we're hoping that it means there's gonna be a lot of people hungry for fellowship coming into the fall semester. Um, so that's both a praise, but definitely a prayer request as well. Um, and then the last one I would just ask is um, just for, um, continued energy and passion and focus for Anakari and I. We've had three years now where we have a child right before the start of the school year. This one's gonna be a little closer to the start of the semester than usual, um, but we're excited. We're not worried about it because um, we have great support, but we would um, definitely appreciate your prayers nonetheless. Um, I think that might be my last slide, if you can go one more. Okay. I don't actually know if we still have time for questions, but um, I'll defer to Pastor Sean. Okay, does anyone have a really good question? Otherwise, we are gonna also be here for the service, so you can talk to us as well, but are there any questions? Yes. Sure. So the, the question was just how can you all be even more helpful to us than you have been in, in possibly other ways? And I'll let Anakari answer that. So uh, we've tried a lot of things in the past. Um, with COVID this year, we haven't really pursued anything, but uh, we can start this back up in the fall. I love that question. Uh, we've talked about having people put together goodie bags for students for finals. Um, because we've seen that from other churches in other cities and it's a huge encouragement and it's actually an evangelism technique that we can give them to even people who aren't in the group. And um, so that's an idea that we've had that we've never pursued. Uh, we also have a lot of students from UMW that have no way to drive to church. Um, and there aren't too many churches in the walking vicinity of UMW that we would wholeheartedly recommend I mean, there's New City, um, but to have people that are willing to drive students from campus to New Life would be awesome. Um, so if anyone's interested in doing that in the fall, we can connect you with a student or three students or however many you're interested in. Um, but as far as counseling goes, we counsel our students and then if there's an extraordinary case, we set them up with a biblical counselor um, for extreme things um, that needs major, major hand-holding through since we have so many students that we counsel. Um, but yeah, if you see us bringing students in and um, if you can introduce yourself to them and maybe take them home for lunch, um, adopt them into your home. There used to be an official adoption thing, but that wasn't organic and it didn't really last and so what I would love to see from the church, and what I think the church does naturally really well, is just taking these students into your home um, so that they have more people that they can rely upon, more moms and dads and aunts and cousins, and because a lot of these students aren't from here. So thank you for that question. And just to add on one, one other thing to that too, as things do kind of open up, um, if anyone does have an interest in being involved in that way, you can contact us. Our contact info is um, in the bulletin. It's on the back under college ministry. Um, but we will kind of keep track of who is interested. And um, as we get students back in the fall semester, um, we'll look at ways that we can um, you know, let our students know of the interest in the congregation to support them and vice versa. So if we need rides or if we have students who are interested in getting to know families in the church, um, we want to kind of start rebuilding that networking. Um, so, yeah, thanks again for, for that question. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Anakari. Can we say thank you to them?
Now, if you're looking for another thing to help with, I know what Josh was doing over the last couple of days and ripping out insulation and putting in new insulation. And so I know there's always help with house stuff that needs to be done, rooms that can be painted and other things like that. And um, so, um, so that's always a possibility too. You know, again, our faith promise goes to supporting the ministry. And so as we, as we pray through faith promise, as we look towards uh, the year, this outreach to college students, you know, it's connected with this and you've heard the stories. And so please, you know, please be prayerful as we uh, continue to build up for, for this missions month and towards, and towards the end of the month. So I have your prayer requests. I took a picture of them. So let me pray for that. And then we'll uh, switch to second service. Heavenly Father, thank you for Josh and Anakari. Thank you, God, for their ministry. And uh, just as been already said, the uh, encouragement that they have been to students um, on that campus, uh, struggling and and um, with COVID, with um, needing spiritual renewal, needing to meet you, Father. And you've put them in the place uh, for just this work. And we are so thankful for that good work that they've done. Bless them in that. Father, thank you for the students. Would you encourage them during this um, time, which so many have had to make adjustment to virtual college, um, be away from others, sometimes being in rooms by themselves, struggles with sin, with family challenges, Father, with lack of friendships. Uh, we do pray for college students to find a hope in you and in what you're doing inside of your church. We do pray, God, for continued growth of friendship between the students, Father, for wisdom and counseling students, um, Father, for their support. Thank you, God, for uh, the way they've been able to raise some support personally, um, as well as some that comes from the church. But do pray, God, for that rest of that personal support, which comes in. We pray, God, for your provision there. Father, we do pray for a safe pregnancy um, and a smooth transition of the fall, partly with COVID and partly with uh, just their own family. Thank you, God, for the way you've blessed them and the way they've just encouraged us today for giving us this view of your work. We rejoice in it. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.